Hello, ho, ho. I come to you bearing gifts, quite, quite heavy gifts. The gift of the best books that I read in 2021. So if you haven't read these books, I think these will be great reads for 2022. It was quite hard to pick a top 10, not gonna lie, I've read a lot of awesome books. These are the best of the best. Mwah. So let's put this down before I get a arm cramp, yes. Don't know how long I can keep this on because it is quite warm. <laughs> so at number 10, we have Loveless by Alice Osman. This is a YA, LGBTQIA plus contemporary novel focused on the A in LGBTQIA <laughs> because this is a YA novel about an ace arrow character who's starting her first year in university. I've mentioned before that I think at this point Alice Osman is definitely one of my favorite YA contemporary authors. I loved every one of her books that I read, though this isn't my favorite of hers, it was still really, really good and offers much needed representation. And I think everything in this book was done really well. And it was just really enjoyable to see a character finding her identity and also just struggling with becoming a young adult and going to university and trying to make new friends. I think we've all been in her shoes at some point in our lives. So it was just a really enjoyable read. So if you're into Y contemporary, I would definitely recommend this. This is starting to itch. At number nine, we have a fantasy novel by an author that I've been kind of obsessed with lately, and that is Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This, I feel like, is a novel that honestly can be read by anyone, including children and adults and everyone of any age in between. It's just so beautifully written, and this, this particular edition has gorgeous illustrations throughout the book, and it was just lovely. This is about a man who goes back to a childhood home and relives some fantastical childhood memories. So he literally goes down memory lane, and it was quite magical, thought-provoking at times. And like I said, I feel like whether you're a child, a young adult, or an adult, you're going to get something out of this. It's probably gonna be different depending on when in your life you read this. This was just beautiful and quite a quick read as well. How many times am I going to adjust the Santa hat in this video? At number eight, I have Normal People by Sally Bruni. This is a literary fiction slash contemporary fiction novel that has exploded. I think around a year or two ago, there's also a, I think, HBO adaptation of it. And I devoured this. Nani? This was really addicting to read and I've actually also read her other book this year, Conversations with Friends, but among the two, I definitely prefer this one. Okay, you know what? It's coming off. It's really itchy <laughs> and really warm, so no more, no more Santa hat. Santa hat. This is about a couple who meet in high school and they are very, very different people and they both are very flawed characters and they shouldn't go together, but for some reason I couldn't stop reading about them. And you basically follow their love story, their tumultuous love story from high school up to when they're college students, but it's mostly set around that college age. And Sally Rooney has a very interesting writing style. I'm not going to give it away just in case you might be put off by it because even though I was in the beginning, you really stop noticing it quite quickly. But it is a rather unique and interesting writing style, I would say. So if you're into some contemporary literary fiction next year, I would definitely recommend this one. At number seven, I have a historical literary fiction novel and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins. Jenkins read. In a similar vein to Normal People, I also devoured this. I couldn't stop reading this. I did not want to put it down. This is about a fictional band called The Six and Daisy Jones, who is also a fictional celebrity in the late 70s, early 80s, and how the two artists come together to create an album, a collaboration album, and the very tumultuous journey that they go on to make this collaboration, and then how they very quickly and very dramatically 
disband. It's told in sort of interview formats and actually I have recently started watching the Beatles documentary that came out recently. After watching that, I think this book kind of reminds me of that. So if you've liked and watched the Beatles documentary, I think this is a great pick because I think this has a very similar vibe to that but in book form. Definitely recommend this one if you're up for something a bit different. At number six, some of you may be surprised that this is so far down the list. Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the epic Stormlight Archive series that I read at the beginning of the year and it is literally the longest book I have ever read, coming in at around 1,400 Bible-thin pages. This took me an age to read, but I enjoyed every second of it. It is not my favorite of the series, which is why I kind of put it lower down this list. I definitely enjoyed Words of Radiance and The Way of Kings better. However, it's definitely one of the best books I read this year, but I can't really go into much about it because it is the third book. If you want to hear more spoiler-free thoughts about this book, I will link my spoiler-free review that I did after I finished reading this book down in the description. If you're into epic fantasy and you haven't picked up the Stormlight Archive yet, this is your sign to do that next year. And number five, a recent read that I absolutely loved, so it had to make it onto this list. This is Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is quite a short novel, I would say it's more of a novella, and this was so unexpected. I loved this so much. I talk about it more in my Dracula reading vlog, which I'll also link down in the description and in a pinned comment. So go check out that video if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this. This follows the three brides of Dracula and we basically follow their polyamorous relationship throughout centuries. And we follow the history of Europe unfold through these characters POVs in such a short book so much happened and I was just so enthralled every single step of the way. The writing is also very poetic, very elegant and just beautiful. Like everything about this book was just beautiful. So I would definitely recommend this. Again, if you're up for something different and slightly horror, the narrative style of this book is also super interesting. It's one of Dracula's wives writing letters addressed to him. So it's written in second person. It's basically the bride telling their story to Dracula. And it's just exquisite. At number four, we have the most recent read, but it had to be on this list because it was just, it was just amazing. This is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachmann. This is a original Swedish book translated, of course, into English about an old grumpy lonely man who is trying to escape this world because he feels like there's nothing else left for him. And then the whole book is him being proven wrong. I live in Denmark and this book is obviously Swedish originally, so there was definitely some interesting sort of Scandinavian things in it, which I personally enjoyed, but I don't think you would really pick up on them if you are not from Scandinavia, because the way it was translated, I think it was done really well, and you don't, can't necessarily tell that it was translated, I would say. Very funny, very heartwarming. If you've ever seen the movie Up, those first like 10 or so minutes of that movie is a lot of the vibe of the beginning of this book. Beautiful, wholesome, funny, and just puts a smile on your face when you finish it. I think this is the kind of book that I would honestly recommend to absolutely anyone, regardless of what you usually read. I think this can just be picked up and enjoyed by absolutely everyone, which I think is why it's so popular. I totally get it now and I love it and I want to read all his other books as well. So we're down to the top three. At number three, I have another fantasy novel, of course, and that is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. I loved this book so much. 
I will link a spoiler-free dual review that I made of this book after I finish reading it because I gush more about it there if you're curious. But this is a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, the most ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons campaign you could ever come up with. I've never seen as many fantasy tropes all thrown into one narrative, but this has them and it works. I don't know how, but I loved it. It's so funny. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's, it almost reads like a parody of fantasy, but at the same time, it's serious enough that you believe these characters and you believe their motives and the plot of the book. And it was just so enjoyable. Like this is the most enjoyable fantasy book I have read this year, which is why it had to make it so high up on my list because I just had a blast reading it. To tell you a little bit more, it basically follows a fictional band. In this world, these mercenary bands are like literal rock bands, so they're like celebrities. And we follow one of these bands that have since disbanded, but one of the members is trying to rally up all the ex-members to get the band back together and go on another quest. That is my pitch. Read it, love it, you're welcome. The second place goes to another incredibly surprising novel, and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. So I read this because of a challenge of reading the highest rated books on my TBR, and that video will be up in the next couple of weeks or so. I didn't know what to expect because this is a World War II story following two sisters in the French countryside. These two women are trying to essentially survive World War II. One of them is being very rebellious and trying to fight back and her older sister is trying to take care of her and everyone else in her life to try to survive the best way she can. I just loved it. I could not put this down. I was reading this everywhere, standing up, like cooking. I was reading it with one hand. I was just like, I did not want to put this book down. That's why it's so high on this list. It was five out of five stars for me. If you're up for some historical fiction, if you've never read any historical fiction, I would highly recommend this. You will just fall for these characters and be with them every step of the way no matter what tragedy befalls them next. Okay, this is it. This is the best book that I read this year at number one. If you've watched some of my videos this year, you will probably know what this book is because I gushed a lot about it and also about the fact that it took me so long to get to it and I regret that it took me so long to pick it up. And that is, of course... Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a YA sci-fi. This is the beginning of his Skyward series. The other two books are out now as well, but I have only read this one. By far the best book I read this year. I was just in awe of how perfect this book was. He did everything right with this. It was perfectly paced, it had the perfect characters, the perfect amount of humor, the perfect amount of world building. Just everything was immaculate with this book. Like I was reading it and as a writer myself, I was just like, oh my god, he did this. How did he do this? How can I do this? This is perfect. He did nothing wrong. And I'm not saying I'm looking for things that authors do wrong, but, you know, as a writer myself, I can't help but question some things sometimes or just, you know, I, I also read a bit more critically, but I had no qualms with this. This was perfect. This is a perfect book. This is a masterclass on how to write YA sci-fi. In this book, we follow our main character, Spencer, who is the daughter of a spaceship pilot who has died in a tragic accident. He has been named a traitor and therefore Spencer is now the daughter of a traitor, the daughter of a coward. And that's the label that she has to live with every single day as she tries to get into flight school to also become a space pilot and follow in her father's footsteps because she doesn't understand why her father has this reputation because to her, he was a hero, he was an idol, he was the best man she's ever known. So she's trying to understand the past of her father and what led up to this 
tragic accident and why he has this label of being a coward. That's all I'm going to say. This is amazing. If you're on the fence about the fact that it's young adult, honestly don't be. This is brilliant. It has no romance arc. The friendships are fantastic and there's some amazing humor in this, some fantastic characters, and incredible world building. Obviously it's the number one book that I read this year, so of course I will highly, highly recommend this book. Okay, we've made it to the end. Let me just put my Santa hat back on. Oh, there we go. These were the best 10 books that I read in 2021. Let me know if you've read any of them and what you thought of them. And otherwise, let me know what was your number one read of 2021. Check out my worst books of 2021 if you've missed this video. And also you can check out my best books of 2020 as well. And I'll see you next time in a new video. Bye.